So here we are in a freshly installed FL Studio 20.7. And you'll see we have the example song here. We can click to close out of that. And we have all of these things set up here showing the playlist mixer and channel rack for this demo project. You can feel the sun and on startup, a lot of the time the audio settings here are correct for what you're working with. But if they are not, and if you want to tweak them to be exactly what you're looking for, even if they are close, we'll just go into the options and hit audio settings. And in here, you're going to set your output and input device. Generally speaking, you'd want an ASIO device as opposed to a direct sound because it'll run better. It's a dedicated sound driver. And depending on what you're using, you may want to change some things here. Like I will probably download a driver for my Scarlet interface that I have from their website. And then that driver would appear as an ASIO device right in this list. But that doesn't mean you can't use the FL Studio ASIO as well. You just click in here to change a few settings there, the buffer length, and that'll just be the amount of latency introduced. The higher the latency, the more time FL Studio has to calculate things, and it can generally run a little smoother. However, if you're trying to monitor or record directly, that can introduce some weird problems, and you might want to go a little lower so that you're getting closer to instantaneous direct monitoring for your recording. I'll leave mine at 512, though, for now. And then you also have your default input and output devices. Currently, they're just set to be the ones that are available in my sound and recording settings. But that's going to be a little bit different for whatever you have on your computer. And the difference between Windows and Mac is just going to be however they would generally handle playback and recording devices. And I am running Windows. But really, a lot of these settings will just be if you want to use separate hardware. Again, like I said, I will be using a Scarlett driver once I download one and install it, since that's the audio interface I'm using. But this one works just fine. There's also a few other settings to set here. They don't necessarily have to change if everything's running okay, but again, you can change a few of these, add in some extra buffers and things like that if things are running slow, and you'll see the latency change as you adjust these settings. And especially at a beginner level, you won't really be changing a lot of these settings if it's running smoothly, which generally it would be. So once you have sound properly coming out without any glitches, you should be all set here. But then we'll go over to this MIDI tab and set up some MIDI controllers. Currently, there are some controllers that will automatically route to the correct port so you can immediately use them like the FL Studio Fire. It's already enabled, but there are, of course, other keyboards that you can enable. So for instance, my keyboard here, the Origin 62, I can enable by clicking on it and enabling it. And the controller type, since there's not a pre-made script for it, will just run it as a generic controller, but there is a way to actually write MIDI scripts if you want certain knobs to do different MIDI CC numbers, but that's kind of an advanced topic to get into. So once we have it enabled and MIDI coming out clearly, which you can see by both selecting an instrument and playing or just looking at the top, you have MIDI data coming in. And then there are settings for your port for input and output, linking velocity and release, etc. Foot pedal, all those sorts of things. Again, generally auto set up in a proper way, but if you want to customize, you can tweak around and play with some of these settings. Continuing down here, the general settings tab is again most likely going to be already good to go for you. You may want to change some of your default templates or anything like that, startup sort of deals, and a few miscellaneous settings, auto naming, and all that sort of stuff. But we'll see a lot of these things once we get into some customization later. Similar deal with the file settings. We can set auto save amounts and a few extra places that we can have available in the browser on the left here. But we'll come back into this. Project and info tabs, we don't really have to worry about too much right at this very moment. The truncate notes is going to come in handy later, but again, we won't get into this sort of nitty gritty right now. Debugging can come in handy, and also about, this is where you're going to actually unlock FL Studio. Once you have your license purchased and your account and everything, it's just a matter of entering your email address and the password, and then agreeing to unlock with account. Or there's also a way to do it with a file, but generally the account is going to be the way to do it. And I'll do that before we start the next video. Because right now we are in trial mode, since I've not unlocked it. And this is the first time I've opened it. And this just means that you won't be able to get your full use out of FL Studio, obviously, since it doesn't know that you own it yet. But you can tweak around like a demo. But really, just as far as setting up and getting the general startup in order, we're in good shape. And once I put in that info to unlock, we'll come back in the next video and be ready to kick things off. So I'll see you then.